to our headline story. Now, the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbing, is expected to rule on the petition that seeks to declare the seats of four members of parliament vacant. The petition brought forth by former minority leader Harun Idrisu has stirred significant debate within the chamber. Harun Idrisu's petition challenges the po position of three majority MPs and one minority MP from his own NDC. The speaker, Alban Bagbin, after a heated exchange of viewpoints, decided to defer his ruling. He emphasized the need for more time to carefully consider the constitutional implications and to ensure that his decision would be both comprehensive and just. Now, one of the uh, members of parliament who is going independent um, in the Memphis Central constituency, specifically Peter Yao Kwache Aka, uh, has joined us on Zoom for a quick chat regarding um, the latest decision by a member of the NDC in the person of Harun Idrisu asking that his seat be declared vacant. Honorable, a very good evening to you. Thank you for joining us on News 360. Thank you very much. And good evening to your viewers and listeners. Thank right. you very much. I'm sure you were in Parliament yesterday and followed the conversation regarding the four seats that uh, the Speaker has been petitioned to declare vacant, one of which being yours. What do you make of it? How did you feel in the first place knowing that there is a threat to your seat before the, the current House rises? Um, I must say, let me just greet my constituents. I'm in Fifth Central. That, uh, I miss them very much. Very soon I'll join them um, to go around and campaign and tell people what I want to do for them. Um, I think uh, you mentioned um, the the argument that went on yesterday concerning the um, MPs who have uh, filed for independent. Uh, I'm one of them, and I believe that to every action there is a reaction. Uh, and so if I filed for independent, I believe that there's going to be a reaction to it. And uh, it should be equal. As we learned in uh, science, says action and reaction are equal and opposite. So um, I believe that uh, there's a precedent. I mean, I was in the seventh parliament when uh, the former MP, the current um, um, deputy, second deputy speaker, also went on the uh, same tangent. He was, uh, uh, his seat was declared vacant by the then um, Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Michael Quay. And so there is a precedent, but uh, we do not know what the current um, Speaker also is going to do. He is an experienced man. He, but, but do you uh, agree the that the, the, the call or the petition is justified, that immediately you declare your intentions to the extent that you have even filed to, to contest as an independent candidate? That uh, inadvertently means that your seat should be declared vacant. You agree with that position at least? As right? I said, there are, there are schools of thought. Uh, I've heard uh, two um, schools of thought, um, 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 eminent lawyers arguing these things out. So it depends on the decision of the speaker. It doesn't mean that if you have a case in court, two judges will judge the same case the same way. Right. It doesn't follow that. It depends on the individual. So that's why I say that if I knew that what is going to, then there's no point. But it could happen that uh, this uh, current speaker is going to take the line of the previous speaker or that he will try to uh, use a different means. But right. as a layman, I'm, I'm an engineer, I'm not a lawyer. But I think as a legislator, sometimes we read these things and uh, we understand. Uh, my simple understanding is that uh, um, during the man's time, there was uh, this. Uh, cross captain of MPs mm. that you could from uh, one one place go to the other by just crossing the maze and going to the other side or declaring that you are no more for this political party, you want to go to the other side. Okay. And I think the premiers of this constitution realized that that could be a problem. So they inserted that before you can join another political party, mm. you need to resign your seat and then uh, the seat will be vacant and then it will be contested for. If you win, then you go to the other side. That okay. was to uh, break up some checks. Um, so this one, I believe that uh, if somebody has declared to go as an independent candidate, he's uh, talking about the next parliament and not this okay. one. Okay. Uh, like in my case, I've not decided to, uh, to resign from my party. I'm still with the NDC. So now if there's a vote today and there's a whip, I'm going to go with the NDC. Right. 
there's no doubt about it because okay. I have declared my intention in the next parliament that I do not want to go as an as as an MP for the for the NDC and that I'll go as an independent. Okay. So All I right. believe that it depends on the interpretation that one will give. To, right. to this one. But if uh, I we, we, are, we that all await react. that interpretation, Honorable. Thank you for at least giving yes. us clarity and your position on this. Uh, Peter Yao Kwachi Aka is a uh, member of parliament for the Memphis Central constituency. Tomorrow, we all await to hear what the speaker's uh, position or ruling will be regarding the call or the petition to him to declare uh, some seats vacant. Still on this subject, though. Let's engage the thoughts of former Speaker of Parliament himself, uh, Professor Aaron Michael Kwe, who was the Speaker of the Seventh Parliament. It was during his leadership uh, of, of the House that the Formina constituency seat was declared vacant. So he has joined us on phone to at least pick his thoughts on the current debate in the House of Parliament. Um, Honorable uh, Professor Mike Okwe, good evening and thank you for joining us on News 360. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, you declared the Formena constituency seat vacant when the MPP drew your attention to the fact that one of their own had decided to contest as an independent candidate. There is a similar development in Parliament where four MPs have decided to contest as independent candidates. It is only fair that, based on your precedence, the current Speaker should also declare those four seats vacant. You would agree, right? Now, it's not that simple. In fact, in order to understand this matter clearly, you have to give it a purposive interpretation. And if you want to give it a purposive interpretation, then you must know, ask yourself, but where is this coming from at all in our, in our Constitution? It is coming from 1979 Constitution and 1969 Constitution. Why did this start at all? Because in the Nkoma regime, there was this practice of carpet crossing. People moving for the political party that they belong to, upon inducement, upon fear, and so on and so forth. It was a tool used in breaking the opposition. Now, so in 1969, the Constitution famous wanted this not to happen again. Therefore, it's a protective measure. It is a shield for political parties so that their members in parliament will not be induced or move out of their political party out of fear or whatever. Mm. It's all to the constitutional, that is the right constitution making proceedings, you will find this there. If you understand that this is a tool in the hand of political parties to protect them, to protect them. And that is why when the Fomina case came, the first thing that I did when the political party the, that the member belonged to complained was to write to the Fomina uh, MP and ask him to explain and gave him seven days to do so. Mm. That was set on him. Oh, good. Then after that, he had an opportunity to defend himself. In fact, he said at that time he was not interested in any such thing. He was concentrating on his campaign. Okay. Fine. Having been given the opportunity, then the speech has to take a step that step was to go by the Constitution. Mm. As the, the report has been made, and also the Constitution of the party that he subscribed to also said that if you campaign against the party, if you hold yourself against the party, if you contest your official candidate, then you forfeit your membership. So, the cumulative effects of the MPP constitution, as they themselves said, signed by the Secretary General of the MPP, was a different matter so ever. Okay, now, so, so, so Prof, should it be our understanding that the current situation, from what you're saying, the current situation of these four members of parliament is totally different from the former situation? Is that the point you're putting across? 
I'm clearly drawing the, the difference. As of now, what is the political party which has complained? And as of now, where is the opportunity to give those people who complain against a hearing? This one is like an adjudication against them. Mm. So you must give them a hearing. Where is the hearing? Okay. And that is what, uh, and you cannot really dismiss that person from parliament. You cannot take any step against him. You cannot take any punitive action against any human being in Ghana until you have applied the only Oteram party rule, that is, give him a, or her a hearing. All right. There's no deal. All right. And that is, please, can I finish? I want to learn, because we need to understand the historicity and the implication of what is happening. And that is why, if you compare the present position, you will realize that nobody is being given an opportunity to defend himself or herself. Mm. But this is against that particular person. Now, if you make this a common general thing, that it becomes like a motion, uh, a motion in parliament, it will become a very dangerous uh, thing indeed. In fact, it will boomerang against mm. uh, the political party system. Why? Because you can imagine a situation where a party has a big majority in parliament. It can use this a way of destroying the opposition party. One, two, they will bring a complaint that there is some problem with that particular uh, political, uh, that particular MP. And if the speaker is inclined towards accepting it, then that person will be thrown out of parliament. It cannot happen like that. And that is what the difference is. The, the commission and news to the benefit of political parties. A okay. political party has complained. I don't know of any complaint formally mm. by the political party to which these members belong. And Prof. also, they need to have an opportunity to defend themselves. Prof, thank you. Those are two critical points you bring to the conversation. One, someone must make a complaint. And in the case of Formina, the MPP actually drew your attention. One. It is not someone. It is the, the party. Political part the party, right. To, to but, which the party belongs, yes. Yeah. Okay, but Prof, is it stated in law or is there any legal backing to that, that the speaker or the party must draw the speaker's attention to it before Article 97.1G is triggered? It is not a matter of drawing any attention. The political party involved, to whom that provision and NEOS must make a complaint. Okay. The, the, the speaker will give that member opportunity to defend himself or herself. Right. The speaker will make an adjudication. This is not a motion to be debated upon politically and to be used as a political tool against members of parliament. This and finally, what, 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 what if it is an independent candidate not belonging to any political party? What happens in this instance? Because we know that the Formula MP, who is currently an independent candidate, wants to contest on the ticket of the NPP. So what, what, in your estimation, could happen here? That person is telling you that in future, with regard to the next uh, parliament, that will be the ninth parliament, I am going to run together with a particular political party. Who is complaining? But as for now, I'm an independent candidate. And I'll be an independent candidate until the expiration of the term of this particular parliament. After that, I'm going to be an, uh, 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 a member for the NPP if I win on their ticket. Who mm -hmm. is the complainant here? And that is why you must understand clearly what is this thing all about. This whole okay. provision, if you understand the politics of the First Republic, and the fact that this was put in to protect political parties and to prevent kicking out members of parliament by way of maneuvering and scheming, mm. then you appreciate this whole thing. Okay. Professor Aaron Michael Quay, thank you so much for uh, bringing some further perspective to this conversation. Certainly tomorrow is just a few hours away. We'll get to hear what the current Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbin, would say regarding the petition before him. This is still News 360 on TV3. On to some other stories now.
And in a significant legal development, the National Democratic Congress parliamentary candidate for Amefi Central, Joanna Jan Kujo, has been disqualified from contesting in the upcoming 2024 parliamentary elections. This decision comes following an order for interlocutory injunction issued by the High Courts in Second D. The Electoral Commission confirmed the disqualification in a letter addressed to Mrs. Kujo, referencing a lawsuit filed by Jedu Fempon and four others against her, the NDC and the EC. The court's order prohibits Madame Kujo from presenting herself as the duly elected candidate and restricts the NDC and its affiliates from recognizing her as such. The EC emphasized that it is bound by the court's order which has not been stayed or vacated. As the political landscape shifts, it remains to be seen how the NDC will respond to this setback and who will emerge as the candidate for the Amifi Central seat. Already, the incumbent NDC MP for the area, Peter Yao Kwachaka, is contesting as an independent candidate.